Next up, we want to introduce you to Mignon Mink Harden. One of the best right. artists and so many other things here in New Jersey. Beautiful sister. Y'all going to learn about her and love her. So get ready. And let's uh, Mink. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about you growing up and a little about if I was to introduce you to someone, what who who is Mink? You know, tell me a little bit about you well, and what music influenced you in art. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I was born in Jamaica. Jamaica! Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I came up when I was 11. Okay. And right. my father collected music. And my father was a big music lover. So music was instilled in me from very young. Right. And then I remember he... I got the system, you know, the when everybody had that that system with the with the glass glass door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He built he built his own uh, <laughs> dual decks and got a mixer, mm-hmm. and he started um, doing house parties, Jamaican house parties, reggae mm-hmm. parties. Nice. So he taught me how to DJ a little bit, taught me how to you know break the system down, dismantle mm-hmm. it, set it up at the parties, mm-hmm. and I started DJing with him. But then I got into house music. He would play the reggae, I would play the house. And I was doing this when I was in high school. Mm, right. When I was in high school. And, you know, so that started giving me a, a deeper love for music because I grew up on all the classics, you know, Ray Goodman and Brown, the yeah. stylistic. Oh, Ray Goodman. Gladys Brown. Knight, yeah. Brown, you yes. know, wow. yes. Um, yeah, uh, Gladys Knight, you know. So I love music from a young age, but I also grew up with reggae. Yes. And reggae, it was reggae taught me bass and horns and, and yes. you know, uh, drums and all of that. So I had a, a vast, vast love for different genres because he would play classical reggae. Disco was a big thing in mm-hmm. Jamaica. We didn't have right. club and house music back home, but disco. Right. And I fell in love in, in, with club music when I came here, mm-hmm. like in the mid-80s. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> anything that made me dance because I love to dance. That's so strange. How yeah, music I wanted music. to be a lot of things when I grew up. I wanted to sing. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a makeup artist to celebrities. I wanted to have a restaurant and all of that. So it was hard for me to kind of decide what I was going to do when I got older. And I knew I wanted to be an artist um, in high school. And uh, when I graduated high school, I wanted to go to an art institute. Mm. Mm. But my father, you know, (laughs) he's going to see this video. (laughs) My father being Jamaican, I couldn't come to my father and tell him that I wanted to be an artist. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, the whole thing with uh, the Caribbean is, you know, you further your education, you know, lawyer, doctor, right. teacher. So I was like, okay, let me try this nursing thing. But it, it wasn't for me. Right. It wasn't for me. So I struggled with that, you know, for a while because I didn't have anybody telling me, go for it, you know, do that. You know, we didn't have that influence growing up. It was just like, oh, that Mink, you know, Mink's doing her little hobby thing with her art. So it wasn't right. taken seriously. But fast forward, as you know, I've had people telling me, man, you got this talent and you're wasting it. You know, you got this God given talent and you're not using it. And I never understood that. Because right. that was the first time I'd hear people, you know, mm-hmm. telling me that. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm wasting my talent. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't my late twenties, thirties. I said, you know what? Because I used to paint on, on jeans in high school, and I was charging my, my classmates $20. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't wow, paint it Malcolm beautiful. X. Mm-hmm. Wow. I was jipping myself, though. <laughs> I was but staying up good. at night, not getting any sleep. You know, 6 o'clock in the morning, it was time to go to school. Don't say you was jipping yourself. You were finding yourself. You were finding yourself. So that was a great <laughs> yes, moment. Yes, thank you. But I was <laughs> charging them $20. They had Malcolm X on their jeans and Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse. And, and I remember that, too. And Martin Luther King on yeah. their jeans. And I'd go to school the next morning, you know. And that's when I knew I got a taste. Like, this is this is what I want to do. Yeah. This is right. it. So it took a while for me to really, you know, Make up, make up my mind and say, me, this is, you know, because you want to try and do things to make your parents happy. And right. that's the problem. A lot of people do what their parents want them to do yeah. and not fulfill their dreams. And especially and not, people overseas and other not countries. Not live their passion. Yes. There's a lot of people who are in professions that yes. they didn't want to be in yes. and hate it. You know, my, um, my, my stepmom told me a story of a doctor who said, you know what? I didn't want to do this doctor thing. I wanted to be a farmer. Right. So he retired and bought a farm and is happy. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to let anybody, anything stop me anymore. So I attempted to start my whole Minx Verbal Art thing right. in my late 20s, early 30s. 
and that, you know, I was doing good for a while. And then, you know, as I wasn't good at marketing and things like that. So right. the business slowed down and I felt like I failed. But right. I didn't know that's a part of it. That, you know, that's how you learn. Yeah, it's like riding that's a bike. How you, yeah, that's how you learn. But I didn't I didn't have anybody, you know, I didn't have anybody coaching me or teaching me mm-hmm. or anything, a mentor or anything. So everything I learned, I kind of learned a lot of things on my own, and I learned the hard way, but it was good. But I didn't realize that, you know, because my, my thing was I had this challenge of not feeling like a failure when something that did fail. Mm-hmm. Right, but it's easy to I say. I think we all had that same. I think that didn't work. I, I think yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I, I did. And I had to realize, no, I, I'm not a failure. No, you're not. I just got to exactly. try this a different way yeah. and yes. go this avenue, and then you know it teaches you what not to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So I started taking it really serious. I was like, you know what? This is it. This is this is what I want to do. I, I don't like working for other people. Right. I don't like other people telling me what to do. And I gave. I got a taste of being my own boss when I was a store manager at Hamilton Mall in, in Mays Landing mm-hmm. when I was 19 years old. Right. They done gave me my own store, and I was hiring people, terminating people, training people. They saw people. that skill come So I got the you. taste of yes. what it's like to be a boss, and I was like, this this is it. Right. This is what I want to well, do. Well, speaking of taste, let's get a taste of some of your work <laughs> and put some of me work up here so we can show the people just what oh, me does. Oh, wow. And she's colorful. She brings life to things. Mm-hmm. You paint with a lot of vivid and bright colors yes, that's my, that that's brings my life to the painting and the room. And I'm getting my painting this year. I want my warrior. Okay. I want it on my wall. <laughs> and I'm going to get my painting. But let's give her another round of applause you, for Thank you know all the great work. It's over there, B. Oh, no, that, that went to Vaughn Lee. Oh. DJ, yeah, DJ Vaughn Lee got that, yeah. Yeah, she, see, what Mick does is that I like is she takes her painting, like when you saw her with um, a young man named Oogie, you know, if you don't know, he, he was used murdered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. he used to be out in the yes. community all the time. Mm-hmm. He used to dance everywhere. Everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. Mm-hmm. And somebody murdered him. Mm-hmm. And they still have not found his killer yet. You know, and during that time, it was such a sad time for the community. Mink painted a picture of him so colorful Mm -hmm. and vivid. And she went out there and she was out there at the vigil. She was out there with the media. She was out there with the people that were in pain and using Mm -hmm. her art and her presence to, you know, uh, be in the community and support and bring some type of support and comfort to the people there. And I really appreciate it, just like you did with Biz Mark. Mm -hmm. They they lost him and you painted him Mm -hmm. and they were so happy to see that. um, painting of their loved one. He loved that painting. Who was so powerful. You gotta hit him up. You gotta hit up Mink's goal and you gotta hit up Mink's page. DJ's gotta come and do something. Oh yeah, Uh, DJ's. I forgot all about that into music now. How has it been affected by you know the arts? How could you even summarize that? I mean it it changed my life completely because uh, as a creative being when I wasn't tapping into my artistry I was depressed and didn't even know the reason yeah, why. Absolutely. I True. didn't yes. understand True. that. I've been there. And yes. I didn't yeah. understand that until as right. soon as I start painting, I'm like, ooh. As soon right. as I started yeah. singing or writing or baking or whatever, as soon as I started doing things with my hands and using my creativity, I came That's alive. The thing. Yeah. So I was like, right. you know what? Now that I, I, I know exactly what it is, no one's going to take that from me again. And that's a good thing. And I'm glad, aren't you glad, people out there, that yeah. she didn't allow to take it to make sure y'all check her out. Yeah, and I also want to add here, we, we are all here for a reason. Yes. Exactly. We all have a purpose. And music what you're doing now and where they can find you to either support you 
or to join you in, 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 in any kind of way to help you go forward successfully. Okay, well, I have the Minx Wearable Art page on Facebook. Okay. Where I have all my art, and I also have the Minx Gold business page where I sell the, the jewelry. Yes. And I have Minx Madly Muffins where I make my, Ooh, my big muffins. goods. Blueberry <laughs> muffins. And then now I'm with the DJs where we, you know, we do yes. the house the house music. And is everything. that something that people can come to to enjoy as yes. well? Oh, great. Yes. For and and is that on your page too? Do you advertise um, we're gonna, it? We just started in October. So we're okay. starting to, I sign up with BMI and we're going to Start setting up the YouTube channel. Right, make sure you get that stuff. publishing right. Yes. Get yes. that publishing right yep. now. Yes. So, You've I'm been you. such a beautiful sister friend. I am so <laughs> proud of you. And I just wanted to give this to you. Oh, sister oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Wow. I the know warrior how much you sister. love them, so you got the this sister warrior. This is my warrior. My warrior. Yes. Ain't no stopping me now, baby. Ain't no stopping me now. Thank you, Minx. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Done by her hands. I love this. Thank so you so much. You. You're welcome.